Come on, try this again. Today, I'm doing another anime review. And this anime review is to... High School DxD Born Episode 11, guys. We're on episode 11, guys. Now, in this episode, uh, finally, it's back to... Well, I can't call a High School DxD episode. Now, I get it. It didn't really have any fan service again. It didn't really have any proper fan service again. It didn't really have... The normal high school DxD fan service. That I have to say, that's the only thing that I saw that's not usual high school DxD. But the episode itself um, is fast paced, as we know. High school DxD post not to be serious. I'm glad it's this episode is not serious, where because like the like I told you the previous episodes, they were quite serious all the time. They were quite serious for some reason. They were technically slow paced, more slow paced than it was in this episode, which was quite fast paced. And I'm glad that that got sorted back to back being fast paced to make it not serious. But anyway, um, back to more what I'm saying. Now in this episode, it's basically set up. It's set up to ha have Issei fighting against Reese Scremory. Because we all know that she's getting controlled by um, Loki. She's getting controlled by Loki somehow. By using the strain ability. We all know that. Now, they, they, they get, they got some help from, um, Valor, um, the Vash and Dragon, um, we know him, um, Issei's rival, um, he, he um, uh, they knew, who's, um, he, he got, they got, got in contact with him, with, um, with the bridge, with the gate bridge, with the gate bridge, um, team, I mean, they knew the person known as Arthur, Pendragon, because he's a Pendragon, so, yeah, but he's not the, the king, King Arthur Pendragon, he's just known as Arthur Pendragon, um, who wills Caliber, of course, but it says passed down through family. This guy uses Caliber to the guy. This guy known as Arthur, who uses Caliber, who uses Caliber, who uses Caliber, who can break through dimension. When Caliber can break through di di through dimension, he, so he used it that to make e e made e made made re made Issei and the entire and the entire gang. To go to um, the dimension gap to save Rius. Now, by doing this, um, they went to the dimension gap to face. Of course, Rius comes by and ends up fighting them. Now they f they figured out a way to uh, to make sure she comes back to her senses. She unfortunately, by doing that, um, it also brings forth an unpowerful um, power. Uh, before they did this, um, Rius Rius. Activate some power that was deep inside of her, which she knew she releases when she experienced very powerful emotions. She releases a power that usually she she knew she releases when she has very powerful emotions, like love or heartache or you know, law of dramatic emotions. And usually those kind of emotions to release that amount of power, but in this one she um. She was able to release that power, but not at its full content, by getting controlled by Loki. So, of course, she, she doesn't have the proper control of this power. But that, Rita still had her conscience. So, they were able to, like, talk, talk their feelings to Rita to try to snap out of it. But by doing so, it seems like Loki implanted into her the, some of the aura of Issei. Because she went to... You can call the Red Dragon Empress form, or Issei's Balance Breaker. She then transformed into Issei's Balance Breaker, and then starts to do it on Rampage again. So Issei has to then brave up and has to fight her. And then, yeah, and that e and it ends there. It ends there with everybody falling through a dimension gap, a dimension portal thing that's sucking them up like a, like a black hole or something. I don't know. It might be forcing them back to their own, back to their own, their own world, their own dimension, but again... It could be them, the dimension gap trying to eradicate them. It, that can also be that. But, yeah, I guess, like, really, guys, this episode again. I'm glad it's back to... I'm glad this episode wasn't as serious as the other episodes. It was fast-paced, and to make it a proper high school DxD episode, in my eyes, they could have added a ton of fan service. They could add a ton of fan service there. You can classify... As the tra you, can, you can classify... You can classify... Reese Gremory transforming to um, Issei's balance breaker form, technically fast enough, because it had an etchy, it had an erotic look to it. 
So you can classify as that fan service, but again, it's clothing. In my eyes, it's clothing. To me, it's not fan service. It's not fan service, just more, just it's clothing, just it's more revealable. Because it seems like in Japan, something like that can really uh, turn on a guy. You could say, I have to say that. So I take it how perverted minds I think Japanese people might have, but again, they're not that perverted. Again, anyway, um, so basically, I think just uh, seen just seen in the balance break outfit is the reason why it might be the only thing I noticed that was fan service. Now the animation, yeah, it's not the best. It was not the best for High School DxD. It was quite low, but low quality, low quality for High School DxD episode. Cause usually it does go quite well with animation, but the animation this one wasn't as lively and as impact enough to make me want to jump around and stuff, which I usually do. Of when it lets them do my live reactions. So, yeah, it's not the greatest. And, yeah, that's all I've got to say, guys. Not much to say in this episode. So, yeah, I hope you guys like it. Become a channel fan today. If you guys want to send me fan mail, just in my description below. Blah, blah, blah. Yep. Anyway, hope you guys like it. Comment, like, and subscribe. And I'll see you guys later. Bye, guys!